Let's look at this example. We're going to solve it by using Lagrangian formalism. And uh, next time when we finish learning the Hamiltonian formalism, we're going to solve this problem again. So you will be able to see how this one problem can be solved by using both of the two methods. Give me a second order system. x1 dot is equal to x2, x dot is equal to u. The performance index here, j, is equal to half integration t0 to tf u squared and find an optimal control and optimal state given the boundary conditions. So let's see how we can apply this to solve this problem. In this problem, do we have a terminal condition? Uh, we do not have S function. So S function is a function of uh, XTF and a TF. And we can also look at uh, what is a TF and what is a XTF and see how we deal with this problem and see this this can apply to this problem. So if TF is equal to 2, it's a fixed number. It means delta TF is equal to 0. And at the same time, the XTF it's giving as well. XTF is a uh, 1, 0. It's also fixed. It implies that delta XTF is equal to 0. And delta TF is equal to 0. Delta X at TF is equal to 0. So the summation of these two terms give us 0. So this equation is satisfied. And let's look at uh, what, uh, what about those. And this equation, partial L over partial U, that is equal to zero, that will give us optimal control. But we need to first know what is L. L is a Lagrangian. L is equal to V plus a function dS over dT plus lambda transpose times G, right? And this function G is equal to F minus X dot. So where is the function G? is equal to f minus x dot. And this constraint requires g is equal to 0 all the time. Let's write up this L function. So L is equal to v. What is our v function? Because yeah. v is everything inside the integration without anything else. And we need to move this half inside so that it will become an integration from t0 to tf. Remember, v right now is a half u square. And that in this case, we do not have this func uh, function s. So that is that term is a zero, that term is gone, and lambda. Oh, lambda is a vector as well. Oops. So we can write it as a lambda one, lambda two, uh, if you want. Let's write it as lambda one, lambda two, transpose times g. G have two elements. The first one is a x two minus x one dot. The second equation over here is a u t minus x two dot t. So let's just write it out as a 1 over 2 u square plus lambda 1 times the first row plus lambda 2 times the second term. So this is our Lagrangian L. The optimal control satisfied partial L partial u is equal to 0. L is this. Partial L over partial u, the first term is uh, u. And anything else, lambda 2. u plus lambda 2. When we find the optimum, uh, u star and a lambda 2 star need to satisfy this. And from here, we can find the optimal control u star is equal to negative lambda 2 star. So let's uh, highlight this in red. So we find the optimal control. But this optimal control is in terms of the co-state lambda 2. And we keep moving when we look at the euler lagrangian equation. So this should help us to create the relationship so that we can solve the optimal control problem. Find the optimal state, find and solve everything. So let's continue to the next page. This is what we are working on. Let me copy over the Lagrangian function as well. And here we have two states. One is x1, the other one is x2. Basically means two equations. And the first one is partial L, partial x1, minus d, dt, partial L, partial x1 dot is equal to zero. And the second equation is about x2. So let's see what is the first equation, partial L over partial x1, right? So that's a 0. And a partial L over partial x1 dot is a negative lambda 1. So negative lambda 1. And this is at optimal states as well. Optimal lambda, lambda 1. And we need to take a time derivative of this, right? 
So partial L over partial X1 dot is equal to negative 11 to 1, and then we need to take a time derivative of that with the negative sign. So the negative sign will be canceled, and the lambda 1 dot, great, we find more information about this cost data lambda 1. And then let's continue to work on the second equation about x2. So uh, let's look at this, partial L over partial x2, that is a lambda 1. Partial L over partial x2 dot, that is a negative uh, lambda 2. And we take a time derivative of that with a negative sign, so that becomes plus lambda 2 dot, right? And remember, these are all in optimal states as well. We use this star to represent that this is the optimal. This is equal to zero. And this gives us the relationship between lambda 2 and lambda 1. We already know lambda 1 dot is equal to something. We'll be able to solve lambda 1 from there. And from this equation, we'll find the relationship between lambda 2 star and lambda 1. So we can solve lambda 2 dot is equal to negative lambda 1. And how about uh, uh, the terms with uh, lambda? So if we work on this, partial L partial lambda minus d dt partial L partial lambda dot, what did we get? The constraints, right? So on top of this, we also have the constraints, which is the dynamics equation. Let's copy the dynamics over here. The dynamics. What do we have? The dynamics is here. Now we can solve these equations. And from this equation, we can find that lambda 1 is equal to lambda 1 star, because the time derivative of that is equal to 0. It means this is a constant, right? Let's call this a constant uh, C1. Giving lambda 1 solved, and we can find a lambda 2. find a lambda 2 star is equal to uh, negative lambda 1. Negative lambda 1, that is a negative C1, and we'll do the integration of that with respect to time t. So we have a negative C1 time t plus C2. After we find a lambda 2, and what is our optimal control? We did it over here. We find a u star is equal to negative lambda 2. u star is equal to negative lambda 2. So that becomes C1t minus C2. At the same time, this needs to satisfy these differential equations. Given u2, I will be able to find an x2, right? Uh, to just do the integration of this, I will be able to find an x2. The optimal x2 is equal to the integration of this. That it will give us half C1t squared minus C2t plus C3. Give us C2, we'll be able to solve x1 from this differential equation. x1 star will be the integration of this. It will become 1 over 6 t to the power of uh, 3 minus half C2t square plus C3t plus C4. So we need to apply the boundary condition to help us to find what these constants are. The next step, apply the boundary conditions. And these boundary conditions are initial and final conditions. The initial and final conditions are given here. These are the initial and the boundary conditions. These are the uh, solutions we find, right? Apply the boundary condition. Um, x1 at 0 is equal to 1 x1 at time 2 is equal to 1. So we have x1 at a time 0 is equal to, the plug the value t is equal to 0 to this formula that give us c4, right? c4 is equal to 1. And x1 at a time 2 is equal to, uh, we submit a t is equal to 2 to this formula that will give us 1 over 6 times 8 times c1. So that's 8 over 6 
times C1 minus plug 2 there so this is uh, this will get us minus 2 C2 and plug T is equal to 2 there that will give us a plus 2 C3 and C4 and this is equal to 1 and x2 at the time 0 we'll continue x2 at the time 0 we submit a 0 into x2 formula that give us a c3 and a c3 in this problem is giving us 2 and then similarly we can find that x2 at the time 2 is is equal to we submit a 2 to this formula that will give us 2 times c1 minus 2 c2 plus c3 is equal to 0. So we have four equations with four unknowns, which is a good sign. So we can solve c1, c2, and c3. So we solve that, we get us, we find a c1, c2, c3, c4. C1 is equal to 3. C2 is equal to 4. And then C3, we already find that. Um, it's equal to 2. And then C4 is equal to 1. Now we can draw the conclusion. So the optimal control is equal to 3t minus 4. And the optimal state of a uh, x2 is equal to the 3 over 2 times uh, t square minus 4t plus 2 and x1 star is equal to 0 0.5 t cubic minus 2 times t square plus 2 times t plus 1 so we can also write as 3 over 2 as 1.5 so this is how we find the optimal control and optimal state. Uh, so let's look at how we use MATLAB to solve this problem. We learn how to solve differential equations and we also learn how to solve algebraic equations. So in this problem, how many differential equations do we have? And here, differential equation, differential equation, and a differential equation, differential equation. We have four differential equations. So it means that we can use the dsolve to solve these four differential equations. So after we solve all the uh, four differential equations, we find x1, x2, lambda1, lambda2. After we get a lambda2, we have our optimal control. And on top of that, we can plot a result and take a look. Let's see how we do that. So this is a problem that we did last time. Let's save it as a, a new problem. Let's, let's call this example 2. And in this example, we are dealing with the optimal control problem. The performance index J is defined as J integration from 0 to 2 seconds and uh, u squared dt. So this is uh, op the performance index. And the dynamics here is giving us uh, dx1 is equal to x2 and uh, dx2 is equal to u. And the boundary condition is given here as so we have x1 0 is equal to 1 and uh, x1 at a time 2 is equal to 1 x2 at a time 0 is equal to 2 x2 at a time 2 is equal to 0 and in this problem we have uh, four different equations summarized here these are the four different equations we need to solve the first differential equation is the lambda 1 dot is equal to 0. And then we need to define some uh, system of variables, right? And we have a system of variable x1 t, x2 t, and lambda 1 t, lambda 2 t, and a ut. We also know the optimal control is equal to negative lambda 2. So let's write it over here. The first differential equation is lambda 1 dot is equal to 0 differential equation of lambda 1 dot is equal to 0 and the second equation is the lambda 2 dot is equal to negative lambda 1 let's write the equation over here the differential of lambda 2 with respect to t is equal to negative lambda 1 
And the next differential equation is x1 dot is equal to x2. Differential of uh, x1 with respect to t is equal to x2. And we have another equation, differential of uh, x2 with respect to t is equal to u. So we can comment that out because we are not there yet. We can take a look at uh, what we get from s. So we already solved s. So s has four functions. So this is the s dot x1. And you can take a look at that. It's a 1 over 6 times c2 times t cubic plus half c4 times t square plus c3 times t plus c1. So you can also look at x dot x2 is that. And at the same time, you can find uh, s dot uh, lambda 1. Because lambda 1 dot is equal to 0, s dot lambda 1 is equal to a constant. And uh, s dot lambda 2 is equal to negative uh, c4 minus c2t. We have this differential equation solved, and we know exactly the expressions. Uh, we need to submit the, the boundary conditions and uh, get the problem solved, right? So we do not have that. And we'll solve the algebra equation by using these boundary conditions. And uh, in this problem, we're going to define two symbols, t0 and tf. And t0 is uh, 0 and tf is uh, at uh, 2 seconds. And we have these four equations with the four unknowns. So in this problem, s dot x1 at a time t0 is equal to 1. Another condition is sub s dot x1 at a time tf is equal to 1. And we also have another condition sub s dot x2 at a time t0 is equal to 2. And x2 at a time tf is equal to zero. We have four boundary conditions, we have four constants we need to find out. So we can solve this equation. Here we use a solve for the algebraic equation and we use a d solve to solve the differential equations. Let's see what we get. So the solved numbers are set in SS. So now we have SS with the four numbers. So SS dot C1 is equal to one. So we'll write that out. C1 is equal to SS dot C1. We keep the same format. C3 is equal to SS dot C3. And C4 is equal to SS dot C4. Then we can plot the results. So we're going to plot the results. And uh, we use the time step is equal to 0 0.1. And uh, the time is from T0 to Tf. That is the same. And uh, X1 is equal to sub dot S dot X1. And the same thing, x2 is equal to, we convert this to double subs, s dot x2, this will give us x2. So we already know the optimal control that is equal to negative lambda 2. We want to find a lambda 2. Lambda 2 is equal to double subs, s dot lambda 2. And our optimal control, u, is equal to negative lambda 2. So now we find an optimal control. Don't have that. Then we'll, we'll be able to plot the results. Here we have two states. One state is x1, x level is x. And we can draw another plot about x2. And copy and paste. This is t x2. This will be x2. And this is the last plot is about the u. That's some of your spelling for the uh, line 43. I think it's off. Lambda, oh yeah, thank you. Lambda 2. Uh, lambda. Yeah. Great. Yeah, good catch. Before I run the code, you already find the problem. That's great. Thank you. So we run the code, and it should do everything, and it should give us three plots, right? So I have a three plot. The first one is the state x1, the second one is state x2. The next one is uh, the control.